On this program and on the six which follow, we will be exploring the world of drugs, the complex issues raised by drugs in our society. Now you may say, this doesn't concern me, or my children, or my community, but this is less and less true. Too many teenagers traded in their idealism for a stick of weed. When I see some teenagers acting superior to those of us who don't need drugs to feel good or understand ourselves, I get real bugged. I started smoking at the end of my senior year of high school. Uh, I was on my midweek music festival, and I wasn't peer pressured or anything, like it's just something I wanted to try, and after I tried it, I wasn't like, whoa, 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 aha, like, that pot. It was more like, oh, wow, that's pretty cool. Contrary to popular belief, I didn't get hooked, nor did my use grow exponentially. And after a summer occasional smoking, my mom found all my stuff. Like two weeks before I left for school, she found all my stuff. And by stuff, I mean an empty bottle of alcohol and a minuscule amount of weed. And she lost it. And I don't know why my mom hates pot so much. I mean, I thought cocaine and heroin were awful substances until my mom talked to me about pot. Well, I smoked marijuana for a while. How long have you been taking heroin? Well, I smoked marijuana for a while. You can quit any time you like. Not true for everybody. And that's the problem. It only took a little time to steal away my innocence. In a matter of months, I went from naive little Jordan to King Kush. Being a student became only as meaningful as having the backpack and sitting in class. What really mattered was the weed. I mean, I smoked day in, day out. Actually, I was smoking morning in afternoon out but that being said who really thinks weed is a big deal well it wouldn't be if it weren't for my damn teacher steven laquire i mean this dude he he encouraged a bad habit if anything he allowed everyone to turn their papers in late and i swear he was out to get me the whole time of course i mean he wasn't actually out to get me but next thing i know he's handing me a paper to write and it's just sitting in my hand and it was sitting and sitting, and then another one came, and that one sat too, and it was just sitting some more. So I just never did my paper. The real problem was I didn't do it once in the 20 times that I'd really had a chance to. I mean, King Kush here, I was in such an ignorant bliss that when that fucking F came crashing down on me, it just slapped on my face like BAM! And I fell hard. I was still high, I felt slow, I was still high, and I knew I just had to say goodbye to all the drugs. As poetic as that is, it's just another way of me saying that I had to quit. However, it is not a fact that practically everyone on grass turns into a flaky drug addict. That's just not true. Too many average and decent teenagers smoke pot without committing crimes, except for the illegality of the sale, possession, or the use of it. Obviously, these are things that bug a lot of the young people. But this time, rather than hear from the establishment, who run newspapers, radio, television, book and magazine publishing companies, political parties, and schools, let's hear from those other teenagers. Uh, so not too long ago, I had an encounter with a police officer, and after the whole little debacle with him and my friends, uh, he said something that kind of changed my views on pot in a, in a big way. The world is changing, and some things are still too hard for our parents to understand. No one has the right to tell me what I can do with my own body, what I can eat, drink, or smoke. This is a free country, and no one has the right to take away my constitutional right. There really is a communication gap, but I think that if I have a better education and better life than my parents, I should make the first move to make that gap become smaller and smaller. Too many teenagers traded in their idealism for a stick of weed. When I see some teenagers acting superior to those of us who don't need drugs to feel good or understand ourselves, I get real bugged. Our brains are nothing more than a bag of chemicals. Thus, our psychophilosophical concept of pleasure is co-referent to high dopamine levels in our brain, and dopamine is released with cocaine. Hence, cocaine is illegal because it's nothing more than pure powdered pleasure. 
However, there's another neurotransmitter in your brain called dimethyltryptamine, or DMT, and to the best of our knowledge, it's associated with mystical enlightenment. Okay, I'm moving a bit fast, so let's break this down. Tryptamine is a chemical structure upon which serotonin and melatonin are based. Both are vital neurotransmitters naturally produced by your brain. Psilocybin, LSD, and Ibogaine are also based on tryptamine, outlined in red, but are Schedule I controlled substances. However, the chemical most closely related to tryptamine is DMT, with just two methyl groups added. DMT is a Schedule I controlled substance, but unlike shrooms, acid, and Ibogaine, there's some in your brain right now. Resting calmly next to the serotonin and melatonin is a psychoactive drug. What you do with your life is up to you. If you become a pothead, you risk blowing the most important time of your life, your teenage. That unrepeatable time for you to grow up and to prepare for being an adult that can handle problems and make something meaningful out of life. Or you have the choice to have the courage to see and deal with the world for what it really is. Far, far from perfect, but for you and for me, the only one there is. Now Wow.